Before speaking about the two-dimensional interpolation, let's quickly review the one-dimensional interpolation. The interpolation is used when we have a data set of X and F pairs. So these pairs can be represented as points on a graph, and the interpolation polynomial generates a curve that passes through the all given points. And if we have a new value on the X coordinate, let's call it XP, the polynomial enables us to find the corresponding F value FP. In this case, the polynomial is a function of one variable, X. That's why it's described as one-dimensional. We use two-dimensional interpolation when we have a data set of multiple columns, like scientific or statistical tables. As you see here, any value inside this table corresponds not to one, but two values. One value is determined by the row, and the second value is determined by the column. In other words, any value inside the table is a function in X and Y. In this video, I assume that X represents the rows and Y represents the columns. What if the value of X or Y is not listed in the table? For example, if we have X equals 420 and Y is 100. Since we have the column at 100, this will be a one-dimensional interpolation over that column. Or let's imagine the other way, like X equals 400 and Y equals 120. It's a still a one-dimensional interpolation over a row. We use the two-dimensional interpolation if X and Y both do not exist on the table. This means we are looking for a value of F that corresponds to X and Y together, or by using the, our interpolation symbols, let's say F of XP and YP. Let's see our numerical example for a better understanding. In this example, I use a part of a table of the dynamic viscosity of water. And as you see, mu is a function of pressure, P, and temperature, T. And our problem here is to find mu at 135 bars and 90 degrees Celsius. When we check the headers of the rows and columns, we see that 135 and 90 do not exist. But we notice that 135 is between 125 and 150, and 90 is between 75 and 100. So our job now is to find an interpolation method in the two directions or dimensions to find the corresponding value of mu. The question here is, should we include the whole table in the calculations? The answer is no. To perform the two-dimensional interpolation, we select a zone around the target value. So I select two rows up and two rows down, and two columns right and two columns to the left. If I'm gonna use Newton's interpolation, for example, it will result in cubic polynomials, which are quite accurate for this purpose. You can choose any size you like for the zone like three rows and five columns and so on. However, you need to be aware of the accuracy of the interpolation method you choose regarding the degree of the resulting polynomial. Also, I recommend keeping the target point or the target value at the center of the zone as much as possible for better accuracy. Theoretically speaking, we may try to create one polynomial in X and Y. However, this procedure is too complicated, so we leave it to look for a much simpler method. The best alternative is using the interpolation procedure in two steps. The idea of the two-step interpolation is to perform one-dimensional interpolation in the first step over the columns, and then the second step over the rows. In step one, we perform interpolation over m plus one number of rows in the selected zone. M here will be the degree of the interpolation polynomials. In our example, we selected four rows, so M will be three. The columns are represented by Ys. We have N plus one selected columns from Y0 to Yn, and we have to perform the interpolation for every column. So in our example, the interpolation will be done four times since we selected four columns in the zone. As a result, step one will give us n plus one interpolated values for each column. The values will form a new row corresponding to xp, 
as we'll see later in the numerical solution. In step two, we perform only one interpolation over the new row at x equals xp, resulting from step one, and that by substituting yp. As you've noticed here, n has become the degree of this polynomial. The symbolic procedures of x's and y's may look complicated, but you will see how easy it is when it is applied directly on the table. Let's bring back our viscosity table and zoom in on our selected zone. To perform step one, we start with xp, which is equal to 135. So the interpolation will include the p values and the columns one by one. The first interpolation will include the column at t50. And by using a regular interpolation method, we get the value 549.3. Now, we move to the next column at t75 degrees Celsius. And similarly, we get 381.7, corresponding to 135. We do the same thing with columns 100 and 150. Now we have a new row formed at 135, and we can move to step two to make one last interpolation at 90. So the interpolation will include the values of t and the new row, and the result will be 317.6. And this is the value of viscosity at 135 bars and 90 degrees Celsius. To save time, I've already included interpolation function. If you want to learn about Newton's method, watch the tutorial video on this channel. The link is in the description below. First, let's create the array X, which contains the pressure values, the array Y of the temperature values, and the matrix F for all rows and columns inside the selected zone. Next, by using the input function, the code will ask the user to enter the values of XP and YP. Next, we create a new array called XC with size zero. In other words, an empty container. Next, we start a for loop that goes through the columns one by one. Since we only need the number of elements in the Y array, we make the loop over y that counts the columns by using the enumerate function and the counter i. And because we don't need the values from inside y here, we put an underscore as a simple placeholder. Using the underscore in this way is a common practice in Python programming. Inside the loop, there is only one line that includes the call of the Newton interpolation function with arguments x, f at the current column, and of course, xp. The return value from this function will be appended, which means added as a new element to the array xc. By the end of this loop, the array xc will contain all elements of a new row that corresponds to xp. Next, Newton's interpolation functions is called for one last time to calculate the value of the new row xc corresponding to yp. Finally, the result is output by using a formatted print. Now, let's test the code and see the output.